The 116th Infantry Regiment is an infantry regiment in the Virginia Army National Guard. The regiment was formed as part of the Virginia Militia. It is one of several National Guard units with colonial roots. Units in its lineage included the Confederate Stonewall Brigade of the Army of Northern Virginia. It was formed under the designation of the 116th during World War I, when previously existing Virginia National Guard units were consolidated in federal service. It fought in the Meuse-Argonne Offensive with the 29th Infantry Division and returned to the United States in 1919, where it was demobilized. It was reformed in 1922 and called back into federal service before the American entry into World War II in March 1941. It fought in the Normandy landings, on Omaha Beach, where it suffered heavy casualties. It served continuously with the 29th Infantry Division in its eastward advance until reaching the Elbe at the end of World War II in Europe. The regiment was inactivated in 1946 and was reformed in 1948. It was reorganized as part of the Combat Arms Regimental System in 1959, during which it became a parent regiment. Its battalions became part of the 116th Infantry Brigade in 1975. Units of the brigade have since been called into federal service for duty in Kosovo force, for the Iraq War, and for the war in Afghanistan. History Virginia Militia The regiment traces its heritage to the Augusta County Regiment of the Virginia Militia, organized on November 3, 1741 at Beverly's Mill Place, which later became Staunton. Elements of the regiment were called up during the French and Indian War and Dunmore's War. The regiment provided a company. Organized on March 18, 1754 and commanded by Captain Andrew Lewis, to the Virginia Regiment. Organized between 11 and August 25, 1755, companies of the regiment led by William Preston, David Lewis, and John Smith became part of the Rangers. During the American Revolutionary War, elements of the regiment were called up for active service. Captain William Fontaine's company became part of the 2nd Virginia Regiment and was organized on October 21, 1775. Captain John Hayes's company became part of the 9th Virginia Regiment and was organized on March 16, 1776. Captain David Stevenson's company became part of the 8th Virginia Regiment. Captains David Laird and John Symes' companies were organized on 3rd of December, becoming part of the 10th Virginia Regiment. On December 31, 1792, the regiment was expanded to form the 32nd and 93rd Regiments. Elements of 32nd and 93rd were called up during the War of 1812. Around 1839, the two regiments became the 32nd, 93rd, and 160th regiments. Parts of the 32nd and 160th were called up during the Mexican-American War on January 6, 1847 as the Light Infantry Company of the 1st Regiment of the Virginia, alternately the Augusta, volunteers at Richmond. The regiment mustered out at Fort Monroe on July 27, 1848. Civil War On April 13, 1861, Volunteer companies of the 32nd, 93rd, and 160th Regiments became the 5th Regiment, Virginia Volunteers. They mustered into Confederate service on July 1, 1861 as the 5th Virginia Infantry, part of the Army of the Shenandoah's 1st Brigade, which later became the Stonewall Brigade. The remainder of the three regiments became the 52nd Virginia Infantry after being mustered on May 1, 1862. The 5th and 52nd Virginia Infantry surrendered with the Army of Northern Virginia at Appomattox Courthouse on April 9, 1865. The successor 116th Infantry Regiment later received battle honors for the engagements that these Civil War units participated in, thus the regiment carries campaign streamers earned in fighting against the United States federal government. After the Civil War, former troops of the 5th and 52nd Infantry became independent infantry companies in the Shenandoah between 1871 and 1881. These units were part of the Virginia Volunteers. On May 2, 1881, the companies became the 2nd Regiment of Infantry at Staunton. Headquarters moved to Harrisonburg on April 22, 1886. The regiment was disbanded on April 2, 1887 and broken up into independent infantry companies again. On April 20, 1889, these became the 2nd Regiment of Infantry again, now with headquarters at Winchester. The headquarters moved to Woodstock on June 15, 1893. During the Spanish-American War, the regiment was merged with parts of the 1st Regiment of Infantry. It was called up between 10 and May 21, 1898 and designated the 2nd Virginia Volunteer Infantry, under the command of Colonel James C. Baker. On 2 June, the regiment began its movement to Jacksonville, Florida, where it became part of the 7th Army Corps at Camp Cuba Libre when it arrived on 3 June. The regiment, along with the 4th Virginia and the 49th Iowa, became part of the 3rd Brigade of the Corps 2nd Division. On 12 August, the Protocol of Peace was signed, ending the combat phase of the war. 
the 2nd Virginia was ordered to be mustered out, and on 19th of September left its temporary camp at Pablo Beach for home stations. The regiment reached Richmond during 20-21 September, where they received a 30-day leave on 23rd of September. At the end of the 30 days the regiment's companies were assembled and mustered out at home stations between 13 and 20 December of that year, with a strength of 46 officers and 1,146 enlisted men. The regiment was disbanded on April 29, 1899 and reorganized from then until 1902 as separate infantry companies. On May 19, 1905, it merged with separate infantry companies formerly part of the disbanded 3rd Regiment of Infantry, which was another regiment that had been formed in 1881 in Central Virginia and called up for the Spanish-American War, to become the 72nd Infantry with headquarters at Luray. On September 1, 1908, it became the 2nd Infantry. Virginia Volunteers. The regiment became part of the Virginia National Guard on June 3, 1916. The regiment was called up on 30th of June at Camp Stewart as a result of U.S.-Mexican tensions on the border. It was sent by train to Brownsville, Texas, on 6th of July, arriving on 11th of July. In late July, the regiment's machine gun company was formed. The regiment became part of the 1st Provisional Brigade there in early August. On January 10, 1917, the regiment became part of the second separate brigade after the command structure of National Guard units in the Brownsville district was reorganized. The regiment departed Brownsville by train after several delays on 11th of February. On 16th of February, it arrived in Richmond. The regiment mustered out on February 28, 1917 at Richmond, World War I. On March 25, 1917, the regiment was called up just before the United States entered World War I, which it did so the following month. The regiment was mustered in between 25 March and 3rd of April. The regiment guarded bridges and railroads in Virginia. The regiment was drafted on 5th of August and a month later departed by train for Camp McClellan, Alabama, arriving there on the evening of 6th of September. On 4th of October, the 2nd Virginia consolidated with the 1st and 4th Virginia Infantry Regiments. The new regiment became the 116th Infantry, part of the 29th Infantry Division, then at Camp McClellan, Alabama. It served as part of the division's 58th Infantry Brigade alongside the 112th Machine Gun Battalion and the 115th Infantry Regiment. Colonel Robert F. Leedy of the 2nd Virginia became commander of the new regiment, which included 105 officers and 3,686 enlisted men. Colonel Hansford L. Threlkeld took command on 1st of January. He was replaced by Colonel William J. Perry of the 1st Virginia on 1st of May. On 5th of June, Lieutenant Colonel Hobart M. Brown took command. Brown led the regiment until it reached France. The regiment conducted training in shooting, gas warfare, and using the bayonet for the next months until June 11, 1918, when it began movement to Hoboken. On 15 June the regiment embarked for France on the USS Finland from there. On 27 June the regiment disembarked at Saint-Nazaire, where it stayed for three days at a former British camp. It moved to Argelers, where additional training was planned. However, due to German pressure on the Allied front, the regiment was moved in early July to Augsell's boss. Threlkel took command of the regiment around this time. In August, it transferred to La Chapelle, Brechomont, and Rep. The regiment occupied trenches in the Oatmarne sector of Alsace. On 21 August, Colonel A.J. Harris replaced Threlkel. On 26 August, the 2nd Battalion was attacked by German troops supported by a heavy artillery barrage at 0430. The German troops were repulsed after two hours of fighting most of which was conducted by Company F. In early September, the regiment moved to Femont, near Belfort, and then to Hargeville and Suhasmal Grand. Around 1st of October, it camped in the Bois Boucher as a part of the 1st Army's Reserve. The regiment fought in the Meuse-Argonne Offensive with the 29th Division. The regiment was attached to the French 18th Infantry Division. The 3rd Battalion was positioned on the southern slope of the ridge southeast of Côte des Roches, and the 1st Battalion was along the Canal de l'Est south of the Simonu Brabant Road. The regiment's 2nd Battalion was in reserve 1,500 meters northeast of Neuville. During the night of 7 to 8 of October, the regiment's battalions moved into the starting positions. The attack began at 0500 on 8 of October, with the 3rd Battalion advancing with its right on Raven Domon. After encountering scant resistance, it reached the immediate objective in four and a half hours. The 1st Battalion then attempted to move through the 3rd but was checked by machine gun fire from the Bois de Brabant sur Meuse. At 1,400 the 1st was able to advance through the 3rd and both battalions continued into the forest. Advancing against machine guns, high-caliber artillery, anti-tank guns, and gas, 
they reached the normal objective at 1540 and stopped at the Raven de Malville, at the southern edge of Malville Farm, on the right and the ridge in Bois Ois Bois on the left, but withdrew to the ridge in the Bois de Brabant sur Meuse, overlooking the Raven de Bourvox. The two battalions had contact with the French on the right, but none with the 115th Regiment to the left. Headquarters Company Sergeant Earl Gregory received the Medal of Honor for his actions in single-handedly capturing 19 German soldiers on 8th of October. At 0500 on 9th of October, German troops counter-attacked the 116th and the 115th Extreme Right, but were repulsed. The 1st Battalion renewed the attack and advanced 1 km, 0.62 miles into the Malville Forest by 1130. On 10 October, parts of 1st Battalion were relieved by the 113th Infantry Regiment's 2nd Battalion. 1st Battalion then extended its line to link up with the 115th Regiment. During the night Division Commander Charles G. Morton relieved Harris of command and replaced him with Division Machine Gun Officer Lt. Col. Reginald H. Kelly. The next day the regiment resumed the attack, with 1st Battalion being checked while moving towards Malville Farm. The battalion was unable to cross a clearing and made two further attempts, which were also repulsed with heavy losses. On 15 October the 3rd Battalion attacked again, advancing in the lead of the regiment. By 1600 they reached the southern edge of the Bois de la Grande Montagne after taking Malville Farm. The 2nd Battalion reinforced the 3rd there, and established a line near the Etrec and Senvoy Road. 1st Battalion attacked in the lead on 16 October and along with the 115th 2nd Battalion had formed a line from the reverse slope of Hill 370 to the road junction area near Malville Farm in the Bois de la Grande Montagne by 1630. The division had reached its objectives and formed defensive positions along the line. From 8 to 22 October, the regiment suffered casualties of 838 wounded, 44 died of wounds, and 152 killed. On 23 of October, the 2nd Battalion attacked towards Hill 361 with the 115th 1st Battalion and the 113th 1st Battalion. The battalion advanced in the center after an artillery barrage and stopped at 1430 after reaching Hill 361. The 1st and 3rd Battalions of the 116th then moved into the line. On the night of 28 to 29th of October, the regiment was relieved by the 79th Infantry Division's 316th Infantry Regiment. From 23 October, the regiment had suffered casualties of 161 wounded, 15 died of wounds, and 46 killed. Total casualties of the regiment in the offensive were thus 1,005 wounded, 59 died of wounds, and 198 killed. During the offensive, the regiment captured 2,000 German prisoners, 250 machine guns, and 29 high-caliber guns. The regiment moved with the division to Vivoncourt. The war ended on 11th of November, and the regiment and the division moved to the 11th. Bourbon Le Bains, training area. For the next several months, the regiment conducted training. Kelly was relieved after being gassed on 4th of December and replaced by Colonel George W. Ball. The regiment was reviewed as part of a ceremony where American personnel were decorated by Field Marshal Sir Douglas Haig, Commander in Chief, CNC, of the British Expeditionary Force, BEF, on April 4, 1919, at Chamon. On 11th of April the regiment moved with the division to the Boulogne area of the Le Mans American Embarkation Center. Ten days later, it was transferred to Saint-Nazaire. On 10th of May, the regiment embarked for the United States on the USS Matsonia. After returning to Newport News on 21st of May, the regiment was demobilized on May 30, 1919 at Camp Lee, Interwar. On October 12, 1921, former units of the regiment located in Western Virginia became the 2nd Infantry in the Virginia National Guard. The regiment was redesignated on March 9, 1922 as the 116th Infantry and assigned to the 29th Division, later redesignated as the 29th Infantry Division. Its headquarters was federally recognized April 3, 1922 at Staunton. During the interwar period, the 116th conducted annual summer training at Virginia Beach between 1921 and 1938. Between November 1930 and January 1931, the regiment restored order during a strike of cotton mill workers in Danville. The location of headquarters was changed on June 26, 1933 to Lynchburg. In August 1939, the regiment participated in 1st Army maneuvers at Manassas, which ended on 19 August. In August 1940, the regiment was transported by rail and truck to the 1st Army maneuvers at Pine Camp, the largest U.S. Army maneuvers held in the interwar period at the time. After the maneuvers, which involved live fire and simulated air attacks, the 116th returned to home stations in the last week of August. On February 3, 1941, 
the regiment was called into federal service and its men reported to their armories for the next 10 days. The regiment and the 29th Division were moved to Fort Meade on 13th of February after being called into federal service. At this time the regiment absorbed many draftees from Maryland, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, and Tennessee, among other states. The regiment conducted training for the next months. In June, the regiment and the division moved to AP Hill Military Reservation for training. From AP Hill the 116th and the rest of the division moved south by road to participate in the Carolina maneuvers near Fort Bragg, reaching campsites on 27th of September. Between 6 and 17 October the 29th Division maneuvered against the 28th Infantry Division, and then as part of two corps alongside the 28th and 44th Infantry Divisions. In the latter it faced elements of four corps and vi corps. After the maneuvers concluded in late November the 116th returned to Fort Meade with the 29th by road. World War II The United States entered World War II after the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. The attack found the 116th traveling north through southern Virginia near the North Carolina border. Upon its return to Fort Meade, the regiment was split up, the main body of the regiment guarded the coastline of the eastern shore and a battalion was detached to the coast of the Carolinas. Between 12 and January 14, 1942, it participated in amphibious exercises with elements of the 1st Infantry Division, repelling a simulated invasion at Cape Henry. On March 14, 1942, at the regiment's farewell dinner, actress Madeline Carroll was made ceremonial daughter of the regiment. The regiment trained at Fort A.P. Hill from April to 6 July, when they began exercises in the Carolinas, the 2nd Carolina Maneuvers. On 17 August, the regiment was sent to Camp Blanding in Florida in preparation for deployment. In September the regiment moved by train to Camp Kilmer, the holding point for American troops being moved to Europe. After arriving on 18 September, the regiment embarked for the United Kingdom aboard the Queen Mary, a passenger liner converted into a troop ship, on 26 September, arriving on 5 October. During the voyage, the men of the regiment witnessed the collision of the Queen Mary with the escorting cruiser HMS Curacoa on 2 October. On the next day the Queen Mary docked at Greenock. In the United Kingdom, the 116th was transported by rail to Tidworth in the southeast, where it continued training. On 11 October, Lt. Col. Morris T. Warner took command of the regiment. On March 16, 1943, Col. Charles D. W. Cannon became the regimental commander. In late May the 116th was transferred along with the division to Devon and Cornwall relieving the British 55th Infantry Division there to free up Tidworth for the build-up of American forces in England, Operation Bolero. The regiment took over responsibility for coast defense in the Plymouth area. With the addition of the 111th Field Artillery Battalion, it became the 116th Regimental Combat Team, RCT. The 116th participated in intensive training in Dartmoor and Bodmin Moor. In July, it commenced amphibious assault training on landing boats loaned by the British at Slapton Sands. In September the 116th RCT began training at the U.S. Army Assault Training Center on Woolacum Beach, the first unit of the 29th to go through the center. At the beginning of 1944, the regiment included 166 officers, 5 warrant officers, and 3,100 enlisted men. D-Day In preparation for the invasion of Normandy, the regiment participated in invasion rehearsal exercises, using landing craft, vehicle, personnel, LCVP and landing craft assault, LCA. For the invasion, the regiment was part of Force O, the initial assault force. The regiment was to lead the assault on Omaha Beach to the west of 1st Division's 16th Infantry, and would be temporarily attached to 1st Division. H hour, the beginning of the invasion, was scheduled for dawn on 5th of June, D-Day, the first day of the assault. Companies A, E, F, and G were to be in the first wave of the assault on Omaha Beach. The beach was divided into sectors, Company A, the westernmost, was to land at Dog Green, Company G at Dog White, Company F at Dog Red, and Company E at Easy Green on the right of 16th Infantry. It was planned that by 9.30 on D-Day, the beach exits would be open and vehicles able to leave the beach. 1st Battalion was to take the Via, link up with the Ranger Assault Group advancing east along the coastal highway, and advance on Vire. Meanwhile, 2nd Battalion would capture San Laurent and the heights southwest of it. 3rd Battalion constituted the reserve, and was tasked with advancing to Longville. Between 3 and 8 May, the regiment participated in Exercise Fabius I at Slapton Sands, a final rehearsal before D-Day. On 11th of May elements of Forso moved to their assembly areas. The regiment relocated by truck to Blandford Camp on 15th of May, 
where it was confined behind barbed wire in order to preserve secrecy. At Blandford each company was briefed on its missions for the invasion. On 3rd of June the regiment embarked for Normandy from Weymouth. 1st Battalion, Companies A, B, C, and D, boarded the SS Empire Javelin, 2nd Battalion, Companies E, F, G, and H, the USS Thomas Jefferson, and 3rd Battalion, Companies I, K, L, and M, the USS Charles Carroll. At 3.10 on 6th of June, the invasion had been postponed for 24 hours due to inclement weather, Companies F and G began climbing into their LCVPs. All first wave landing craft had left the ships by 4.30. At 5 o'clock, a naval and aerial bombardment commenced pounding the German defenses, but the aerial bombardment was ineffective and the naval bombardment failed to destroy most of the German gun emplacements, manned by the 352nd Infantry Division. The landing craft approached Vier Via at 6 o'clock, and at 6.36 the ramps of Company A's five surviving boats out of seven were dropped after reaching the assigned sector. There were no shell holes for cover at Dog Green and within seven minutes Company A was virtually wiped out by either the heavy German fire or from drowning in the surf. By the end of the day, only 18 of 230 members of the company had avoided becoming casualties. Company G mainly landed on Dog Red after its boats drifted off course from their assigned sector, Dog White. Smoke from grass fire shielded the three or four sections on Dog Red, who suffered few losses to sporadic and inaccurate fire as they moved across the tidal flats. Most of Company G reached the shingle intact 10 to 15 minutes after landing, but other boats suffered heavy casualties farther to the east. F Company mostly landed in its assigned sector, Dog Red, directly in front of the strongly fortified German positions at Les Moulins, and was disorganized due to losses of officers. Company E, assigned to Easy Green, ended up east of Fox Green with E Company of the 16th Infantry. The second wave began at 7 o'clock, landing in a period of 40 minutes. Company B waited ashore around 7.26 and suffered heavy casualties, although one of its boat teams took Vier Via. By the end of the day Company B had been reduced to 28 men. The regimental command group landed around 7.30 with Assistant Division Commander Brigadier General Norman Cota and Canham. They rallied the men for the attack and around 8.30 Cota discovered an exit off the beach, through which men began advancing. Company D landed off course, running into heavy German fire. Company H suffered heavy losses to German machine gun firing from Le Moulin. Company K landed around 7.50 and elements of the unit ended up pinned down until midday near the Vier Via draw. Company L also landed around this time. Around 9 o'clock Company K began advancing inland, breaching the seawall but losing 15 men in a minefield before reaching the crest around 12.30. 111th Field Artillery's guns were lost in the surf and its artillery men ended up pinned down in front of Le Moulin like 2nd Battalion after landing between 7.30 and 8.30. Company G advanced up the beach between 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock, meeting the wounded Canham, who was organizing an attack on Vier Via. Around 8.30 he and 50 to 60 men moved up a hill to the right of Hamill, this group later joined up with an element of Company B led by Lt. Walter Taylor in the attack on the fortified chateau at Vier Via. Company H landed at H plus 30 but suffered heavy losses because the smoke from the grass fires had lifted by that time. After Taylor's group captured the chateau, they advanced beyond the house but had to pull back to the house when three truckloads of German infantry counterattacked. Company K linked up with 5th Ranger Battalion at 1600 hours and advanced into Vier Via, encountering only sniper fire. At the end of the day, only 250 men were left from 1st Battalion. Meanwhile, 3rd Battalion and elements of 2nd Battalion held positions northwest of St. Laurent near the 115th Infantry. Company C and Ranger units were west of Vier Via, while parts of 1st and 2nd Battalions and the 121st Engineers were half a mile south of Vier Via. On 6th of June, the regiment suffered 341 casualties, including soldiers from Bedford-based Company A, a community which proportionally had the highest D-Day losses in America. The National D-Day Memorial was located in Bedford to honor their loss. On 7th of June, 1st Battalion moved back to Point du Hoc against stiff German resistance to assist the Rangers in repulsing a German counterattack, digging in there for the rest of the day. On 8th of June, 2nd and 3rd battalions joined the 1st at Point du Hoc, and the 116th fought as a unit for the first time in the war. Companies K and L with 3rd battalion assisted the Rangers in an attack across a bridge on the Or later in the day. During a move from Les Moulins, 2nd battalion broke loose from the beach and fought their way to a farmhouse to establish the 1st command post in France. Towards the end of 8th of June, Company K advanced on Grand Camp, 
during which Technical Sergeant Frank Paragori killed numerous German soldiers and forced others to surrender. He was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor. After capturing Grand Camp, 2nd and 3rd Battalions mopped up scattered German resistance, while 1st Battalion continued the advance towards Maisie and the Coastal Battery. Son Lo. On 11th of June the 116th was withdrawn to the reserve in order to reorganize due to the D-Day losses. After the 115th Infantry was repulsed while attacking across the L towards the key road junction of San Lo, the 116th was moved forward on the morning of 13th of June. The regiment began crossing the river at 2015, encountering heavy small arms which died down, allowing the 116th to reach the opposite bank by midnight. The 2nd Battalion captured St. Clair, and Cuvains was captured at 10.45 on the morning of 14th of June. By 17th of June, most of the regiment had reached positions only 3 miles, 4.8 kilometers, short of San Lo, but the fighting in the Battle of San Lo bogged down in the difficult Bocage terrain of Normandy. The 116th fought to overcome Martinville Ridge near the city from 12 July, then after street fighting the city was captured on 18 July. 3rd Battalion Commander Major Thomas T. Howey was killed by a mortar shell on 17 July just before he was to lead his unit into the city and moments after telling Division Commander Major General Charles Gerhardt C.U. in St. Lo. His flag-draped body was brought into the city on the lead jeep during its liberation and laid in state in the city square. Between 7 June and 19 July, 438 men of the regiment were killed, 2,040 wounded, and 38 missing, for a total of 2,516 casualties. On 20th of July the 29th was relieved by the 35th Infantry Division and sent back into 19th Corps Reserve near St. Clair. In reserve, the regiment rested and received replacements. During Operation Cobra, the breakout from Normandy, the regiment fought in the advance on Vire in early August. Its objective was to secure the high ground to the north and northwest of the town. Between 7 and 8 August, 1st Battalion took Hill 203, covering the approaches to the town, which was abandoned by the German defenders in the morning. Following the capture of Vire, the division was pulled back to receive replacements, and the regiment conducted battle drill and small unit training between 16 and 21 August. Brest. On 22nd of August, the regiment moved out by truck for Brest, a strongly fortified German-held port city. The regiment completed its march by the afternoon of 23rd of August at an assembly area near Plaudel Mazo, 10 miles, 16 kilometers, northwest of the city. The 116th, the first to arrive, sent the 3rd Battalion to a forward assembly area one mile northeast of St. Renan on 24th of August. From the forward assembly area, the battalion patrolled the line of departure for the 29th's attack, a southeast facing line around 4 miles northwest of the city. For the attack, the 29th was positioned on the right flank of 8 Corps. The regiment moved up to the line of departure on the night of 24 to 25 August beginning the attack at 1 o'clock. The 116th advanced south in column of battalions with the 115th Infantry on its left. Its 3rd Battalion initially faced little resistance, and by 4 o'clock, the 1st Battalion was tasked with capturing the high ground at Guilers and Carriolet by attacking on the 3rd Battalion's right. German resistance increased throughout the day, and the regiment dug in for the night. During the next two days, German opposition stiffened further and the regiment was relieved by the 115th so that it could flank the German positions by using a natural ridge line towards Brest. On 28th of August, the 116th took positions on the division's right flank, moving forward to Kyrgyzstok by the evening in column of battalions. It advanced 500 yard the next day, but the fighting bogged down on 30th of August. A midnight attack by the 1st and 2nd battalions took La Trinité on the night of 4 to 5 September, after which they repulsed a German counterattack on the next day. The regiment's 3rd Battalion was assigned to Task Force Sugar alongside the 5th Rangers and a tank unit, attacking Hill 53 and helping to cut the coastal highway. On the night of 13-14 September, the 116th replaced the 115th in the attack against Fort Montbury. After the 121st Engineers blew gaps through the minefields surrounding the fort, Company C attacked at dawn and cleared the ground west of the moat in fierce close combat. After the engineers continued clearing the minefield under the cover of a smoke screen, a combined tank and infantry assault was launched at 1700 hours. Advancing behind flame-throwing Churchill tanks, Company B mopped up German resistance, enabling the 1st Battalion to surround the fort by the end of the day. Fort Montbury surrendered on 16th of September after the engineers tunneled under the fort and blew parts of it up with explosives. The battalion captured around 75 German soldiers. In house-to-house -house fighting the regiment advanced into the last German stronghold, recuperance, and cleared the area by the end of 17th of September. 
The remaining defenders surrendered on 18th of September and the 116th was tasked with policing the division area in Brest before moving out to a rest area on 19th of September. However, the regiment's rest was brief, and they moved out by train for the Siegfried Line on 24th of September, arriving at Visay in Belgium on 29th of September. Siegfried Line on 6th of October, the 29th, as part of 19 Corps, was tasked with protecting the Corps left flank, probing the Siegfried Line a German fortification line on the Franco-German border, and following up the 2nd Armored Division advance at Geilenkirchen. The 116th was positioned on the right flank of the Corps, with the 1st Infantry Division on its left and the 3rd Battalion cooperating with the 2nd Armored's Combat Command A, CCA. The 3rd Battalion rode across the Worm from Rimberg on CCA's tanks, dismounting at Umbach to occupy the town. On the next day the attack continued towards Bosweil and Oichweiler, which fell on 8 and 7 of October respectively. Between 1 and 4 October the 1st Battalion was attached to the 30th Infantry Division, defending positions 3 miles northwest of Aachen. On 4 October the 2nd Battalion was moved up from the reserve to the Kirkrade and Holes area, relieving the 30th's 120th Infantry. On 13 October, the regiment's 1st and 2nd Battalions were attached to the 30th Division for an attack on Aachen through heavily defended Wurzelen. Under heavy German artillery and mortar fire, the 116th advanced between 500 yards, 460 meters, and 1,000 yards, 910 meters, by the end of the day in street fighting. The attack was resumed the next day, and 2nd Battalion Commander Major Charles Cawthon was wounded, he was replaced by Colonel Sidney Bingham. The regiment was withdrawn from the front and returned to the 29th after the capture of Aachen for rest and river crossing training at Brunsum between 23 and 24 October. In early November the division returned to the front taking positions on the line of Schofebberg, Oitweiler, and Bosweiler against Yulish. During the month Dwyer transferred to another unit and was replaced by Lt. Col. Harold A. Castle. On 16 November the attack began, with the 116th joining with units from the 2nd Armored to take Sederich on the 29th's left flank. Its 1st Battalion attacked from the south with companies B and C, but were stopped 400 yards, 370 meters, short of the town on 17 November by machine gun fire. That night, Company A moved up to the town's western side, while the 2nd Battalion attacked from the southeast. The three-pronged attack with tank support captured the town in street fighting on 18-19 November. The regiment briefly went into reserve at Bosvila before moving forward to take Ungershausen and Engelsdorf on 20th of November. It then advanced against Kosler, the last line of defense before Yulish, beginning 21st of November. Due to mud and adverse weather conditions Kosler was not taken until 28 November. In early December, Bingham replaced Castle in command of the regiment. In heavy fighting the regiment cleared the west bank of the Ruhr River by 9th of December. The front then settled down and the regiment trained for the Ruhr crossing for the next weeks. Advance into the Ruhr to the end of the war. After the German counterattack in the Battle of the Bulge, the 116th took over the 2nd Armored's positions after it left for the fighting. In January the regiment conducted three major raids on German positions on the opposite bank, which kept the German troops on edge. On 23rd of February the division launched the attack across the Ruhr, with the 116th 3rd Battalion capturing Emirat, and the 2nd Battalion Lutzerat on 27th of February. After pausing to regroup, the regiment continued towards Spenrath and Pesh, with the 1st Battalion taking Otz and Rath just before nightfall. These gains brought the 29th Division to Munchen Gladbach, and the regiment bypassed the city on the right on 1st of March cutting off the defenders. On 24th of March the 1st Battalion took over security at 9th Army headquarters in the city. At the beginning of April, the regiment went back into combat, attached to the 75th Infantry Division, attacking the Rohr Pocket. It took up positions on 2nd of April, and was tasked with crossing the Dortmund EMS Canal in an attack beginning two days later. Preceded by a half-hour artillery bombardment, the regiment's 1st and 2nd Battalions crossed the canal and captured Waltrop. As German resistance crumbled, it reached the Dusburg Berlin Autobahn by the end of 5th of April. On the next day, the 3rd Battalion flanked the German left, advancing 5,000 yards, 4,600 meters, and repulsing a German counterattack against Company Z and G with the assistance of American artillery. The regiment then transferred back to the 29th. For the next few days the regiment helped organize displaced persons camps before moving back into action to mop up the Ruhr pocket between 18 and 19 April. After overcoming token resistance and accepting German surrenders, the regiment reached the Elbe on 24th of April. At the Elbe it met troops of the German 160th Infantry Division, recently transferred from Norway, K-1 
capturing 1,600 prisoners. On 2nd of May the division linked up with Soviet troops on the other bank, and Germany surrendered five days later. The regiment suffered casualties of 1,298 killed, 4,769 wounded, and 594 missing for a total of 7,113 during the war. In mid-May the 116th began occupation duty in the Bremerhaven and Wesermond area in the Bremen enclave. On 24th of December the regiment boarded the transport USS Lejeune, setting sail for New York on Christmas Day. It arrived at New York on January 4, 1946, after which its men were demobilized. On 6th of January, the regiment inactivated at Camp Kilmer, Cold War. The regiment was reorganized and federally recognized on March 24, 1948 at Staunton. It became a parent regiment of the Combat Arms Regimental System on June 1, 1959. It included the 1st and 2nd Battle Groups, part of the 29th Division. On March 22, 1963, the battle groups were converted into battalions. On February 1, 1968, a 3rd Battalion was added and all three battalions became part of the 28th Infantry Division when the 29th was inactivated. On April 1, 1975, the regiment's battalions became part of the 116th Infantry Brigade of the 28th Division. In 1997, the 3rd Battalion's Company C deployed to Bosnia, mostly guarding the Sava River Bridge. This was the first time since the Vietnam War that a National Guard Infantry Company had been deployed to a combat zone. The company suffered no losses and had no incidents before returning home in May 1998. War on Terror On November 1, 2002, the 2nd Battalion, 116th Infantry Regiment was mobilized for deployment to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba to take part in Operation Enduring Freedom. This marked the first mobilization of a battalion of the 29th Infantry Division since World War II. The unit provided security of the base and Camp Delta, the detainee operations camp. The deployment ended in October 2003. On March 1, 2004, the 3rd Battalion, 116th Infantry Regiment was mobilized for deployment to Afghanistan to take part in Operation Enduring Freedom. Members of the battalion reported to armories around Virginia and began arriving at Bagram Airfield in Afghanistan on July 15, 2004. They were quickly engaged in operations. The battalion conducted combat operations in Ghazni and Sikfor operations at Bagram Airfield. Numerous slice elements were placed under the operational control of the battalion. The newly formed task force assumed the name of the beach as the regiment stormed more than 60 years prior, Normandy. During the deployment two 116th Infantry soldiers were killed by a roadside bomb, the first Virginia National Guard soldiers to die in combat since World War II. The battalion returned to the United States, being released from active duty and reverting to state control on June 16, 2005. On September 1, 2005, the regiment was reorganized and redesignated as the 116th Infantry, eliminating the 2nd Battalion. It was redesignated as the 116th Infantry Regiment on 1 October. On February 3, 2007, the 3rd Battalion under the command of LTC John M. Epperly was alerted for deployment in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. On 23 June the battalion entered active duty as Task Force Normandy. After four months of training at Camp Shelby, the battalion deployed to Iraq and Kuwait in September. A company provided convoy escort in the area of Fallujah and Ramadi, part of Multinational Division West. B Company provided convoy escort west of the Euphrates and near the Syrian border, also part of Multinational Division West. C Company provided convoy escort around Mosul and Kirkuk in Multinational Division North. Ten soldiers were wounded in the deployment, nine of whom were from C Company. In Kuwait, Headquarters Company and D Company became part of Security Force. D Company guarded Ash Shaiba and Headquarters Company provided command and control for D Company and the Area Reaction Force for Southern Kuwait. The battalion returned to the United States in April 2008 being released from active duty and reverting to state control on July 26, 2008. Third Battalion earned the Meritorious Unit Commendation for the deployment as well as campaign credit for the Iraqi Surge Campaign and the Global War on Terror Expeditionary Campaign. The 1st Battalion was ordered into active federal service on January 25, 2010. From March to August, it deployed to Iraq. The battalion operated out of contingency operating base Adar in southern Iraq, conducting convoy escort missions with the 256th Infantry Brigade Combat Team of the Louisiana Army National Guard. The battalion received a meritorious unit commendation for its actions. It was released from active duty and reverted to state control on February 8, 2011. Company D of the 3rd Battalion and Company C of the 1st Battalion deployed to Iraq with Task Force 183 in August 2011, 
after being called into federal service on 1st of June. Operating out of contingency operating base at her, Company C conducted 56 convoy escort missions and earned 12 Bronze Star medals. Company D conducted security and force protection missions. In December, the two companies returned to Camp Atterbury and transitioned back to the National Guard. The 3rd Battalion, commanded by Lt. Col. Kurt Kobernick, deployed to Camp Asalia in Qatar as Task Force Normandy from September 2015 to July 2016. There, the battalion conducted security operations. In July 2016, they were replaced by the 1st Battalion of the Regiment, commanded by Lt. Col. Christopher Samuelski. The 1st Battalion was relieved by the 1st Battalion, 138th Infantry Regiment of the Missouri Army National Guard in March 2017, Kosovo. In August 2006, the 1st Battalion mobilized in support of KFR as part of the 29th Infantry Division to provide stability operations in the Serbian province of Kosovo with NATO. The battalion trained at Camp Atterbury for two months, and then deployed to Kosovo on 6 December. They become known as Task Force Red Dragon for the duration of their deployment in Vitina Municipality, which ended on November 5, 2007. Current Units As of 2018, the following units of the parent regiment were active in the Virginia Army National Guard, as components of the 116th Infantry Brigade Combat Team. 1st Battalion, 116th Infantry. 3rd Battalion, 116th Infantry Regiment. 1st Battalion, 149th Infantry Regiment. 2nd Squadron, RSTA. 183rd Cavalry Regiment, 1st Battalion, 111th Field Artillery Regiment, 229th Brigade Engineer Battalion, 429th Brigade Support Battalion, Commanders. The following officers commanded the 116th from 1917 to 1942. Colonel Robert F. Leedy, 5 August December 29, 1917. Colonel Hansford L. Threlkeld, December 29, 1917, January 18, 1918. Colonel William J. Perry, 18 January June 1, 1918. Lieutenant Colonel Hobart B. Brown, 1 June June 26, 1918. Colonel Hansford L. Threlkeld, 26 June August 21, 1918. Colonel Archie J. Harris, 21 August October 12, 1918. Colonel Reginald Kelly, 12 October December 1, 1918. Colonel George W. Ball, December 1, 1918, April 23, 1919. Colonel Fitzhugh L. Minager Road. 23 April May 30, 1919, Colonel Hiram L. Opie, April 3, 1922, June 26, 1933, Colonel George M. Alexander, June 26, 1933, June 6, 1940, Colonel Everts W. Opie, June 6, 1940, October 10, 1942, Heraldry, Distinctive Unit Insignia, approved on March 31, 1925. The distinctive unit insignia is a gold color metal and enamel device 1 and 3 16 inches, 3.02 centimeters, in height overall consisting of a shield blazoned, gules, a saltier argent voided throughout per saltier gray and azure per cross counter changed, in chief a fleur de lior. Attached below and to the sides of the shield a gold bipartite scroll inscribed ever to dexter and forward to sinister in black letters. The blue and gray on the insignia represents the mixed Confederate and Union lineage of the regiment and its artillery traditions. The fleur de lis symbolizes the regiment's service in France in World War I. Coat of Arms, Battle Honors The regiment received battle honors for the following actions. Revolutionary War, Brandywine, Germantown, Monmouth, Charleston, Cowpens, Guilford Courthouse, Yorktown, Virginia 1775, Virginia 1776, Virginia 1781, South Carolina 1781, North Carolina 1781, War of 1812, Maryland 1814, Civil War, Confederate Service, 1st Manassas, Peninsula, Valley, 2nd Manassas, Sharpsburg, Fredericksburg, Chancellorsville, Gettysburg, Wilderness, Spotsylvania, Cold Harbor, Petersburg, Appomattox, Virginia 1861, Virginia 1862, Virginia 1863, Virginia 1864, Maryland 1864, World War I, Meuse Argonne, Alsace 1918, World War II, Normandy, with Arrowhead, Northern France, Rhineland, Central Europe, War on Terrorism, Afghanistan, Consolidation I, Iraq, Iraqi Surge, earned by Companies A, B, and C, 3rd Battalion, Headquarters Company, Lynchburg Home Guard, 2D Battalion, additionally entitled to, Civil War, Confederate Service, North Carolina 1863, North Carolina 1864, 